in the mansions of the rich and powerful you will find everything from silver and gold serving bowls to wooden containers and clay jars some are used for special occasions where honor is important see some bowls when you see those containers when when you see those um, cup and saucers and the plates with which they serve they are of the highest best quality and grade right if a if a very special guest comes to your house you will try to bring the best utensils in front of him right the dining table will be filled with the best of the best right but if i come it will be <laughs> normal <laughs> anyway yeah so so tell them paul is saying see where some vessels are for honor it is important others are used for more mundane tasks in my kitchen in my house yes we have some very special utensils vessels bowls cup and saucers at the same time we have very very simple stainless steel and aluminum paul is say, saying to timothy pastor timothy my son my spiritual son speak to your people to your congregation and tell them to clean up their lives and purify themselves from dishonorable teachings that lead people astray then they can become honorable vessels consecrated and useful to the master made ready for every good work he has in store hallelujah such a powerful biblical verse right it is just a letter he wrote but the words are so much filled with god's anointing and power my dear brothers and sisters what is he saying what is the context paul is saying my days are counted emperor nero is going to kill me i am already in the prison he is going to tell the date and the and the security guards are going to come and chop off my head yeah my days are counted timothy the apostolic ministry for which the lord god has called me is so powerful i have healed i have cured i have preached the gospel to difficult places i have been always traveling 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 whenever i was out of money i used to build tents and sell it and i gathered money and then again i traveled to preach the gospel do you understand the life of paul it was not a easy life he had to work and he had to uh, save money for his travels there was no continuous support for him so he had to do that and he is saying now my days are being counted i am i am at the end of my life time i cannot go again to the streets and preach and heal the people heal the sick and uh, deliver the people and bring hundreds and hundreds of people to god's love but you are there my son timothy you had a wonderful grandmother who taught you the scriptures the old testament scriptures who brought you up in a proper way before god jehovah and now you are accepted jesus christ as your personal savior you are a christian and now you are a pastor to a congregation and there are other branches churches that, that that are reporting to you timothy now it is your time for you to take up the mantle from me do you understand this is the context yeah now i request you to be that timothy you and i are the timothy now because we have timothy was able to catch hold of that mantle and he did a proper ministry in his lifetime but now over the period of hundreds of years the real apostolic ministry the real true men of god are lost very few handful of people here and there are scattered in god's kingdom right there's a big scarcity for true men of god and god is calling you to be that timothy do you understand for that what should you do that is the context why am i bringing this message because god is preparing you and me for a great move of god in this place until unless we go through this process of cleaning cleansing we will not be able to enter into that ministry of revival do you understand so what is paul's advice you are timothy you admire my ministry you admire the anointing upon me paul is saying and you have seen the mighty miracles i have raised dead people before you right you have been amazed and i have run congregations for you in corinth i ran the church for two years so you have seen my ministry the power of god's ministry he, timothy has witnessed but for you to be in this calling of an apostle and to run the churches to the next level 
you need to go through this and you need to you need to ensure that your church congregation also does this what is that clean up their lives and purify themselves from dishonorable teachings what is polluting people in the church dishonorable teachings compromised people are there who will put who will bring bring about leakages in your in the anointing in the power of god's word do you understand so be careful that your ship doesn't have any leak, leaks because of you are on water the world is like water it will gush through into your boat whenever it gets a small hole a small not a big hole just a small hole is enough a small leakage is enough to destroy lives dishonorable teachings are there there are people among you who are bringing dishonorable dishonorable teachings so you have to ensure such type of teachings are plucked out of your congregation then they can become honorable vessels see then only then that is, that is what it means only when you clean up your vessel only when you ensure that there are no leakages in your church through dishonorable teachings through lot of imaginations angelology lot of angel dreams and stuff and all all these things are contaminating the truth of the world so ensure that you put put a stop over that make each and every vessel in the congregation honorable vessels consecrated which is set, set apart vessels and useful to the master hallelujah when someone comes to my house and if i want to fetch a cup of water drinking water i go to my kitchen do you think i'll go to the dirty dishes dirty cups no i'll just go to those already washed up vessels yeah right that is how the master's hand will go likewise in the church also in god's kingdom also god's hand is ready to use people use the vessels but unfortunately all the vessels are in the sink unwashed vessels not ready to be washed not willing to be washed full of grease and oil full of chicken fried oils very difficult to cleanse them do you understand they enjoy that chicken oil the chicken fried oil do you understand we enjoy that deep fried oils very difficult to cleanse my dear brothers and sisters exactly this is what's happening god's love is there for us he's a compelling love it the hand of god is searching for clean vessels but he is still struggling to find a clean vessel at least if i'm not finding the good clean vessels in the cupboards i will go to the dishwasher right in the dishwasher if i open if there are some cups fresh uh, uh, to be used i will use it the last will be the one i will go to the sink to wash it and uh, make it ready do you understand yeah so we have to ensure that we are clean vessels consecrated set apart like this lectern this lectern yeah this pulpit lectern is set apart for god's ministry right they don't allow any other non ministry people to give any lectures here this place all these chairs seats beautiful seats everything is consecrated for god's service do you know that this pulpit area is consecrated for god's service they don't allow any no secular people to come and uh, conduct uh, conferences or companies conferences nothing happens here it's only for god's ministry this also and also this item was bought only for the communion cups we don't use it for anything else likewise god wants clean vessels not just clean vessels which are used by multiple other people but consecrated consecrated are you consecrated are you set apart for god or are you mingling with other people or other things which shouldn't be happening in your life my dear brothers and sisters i admire paul his writings and his anointing the intelligence and the interpretations his ministry was extraordinary even in the days of apostles if you ask saint thomas or saint andrew they will say yes saint paul is of a higher grade 
Bible says he did special miracles when there were already miracles happening daily by the apostles. Just imagine the level of anointing that he had. Paul is saying, that, giving the secrets because it is last time. He has to impart that anointing to the next generation. And he believed Timothy will be the person who will carry these secrets to the next generation. Timothy was almost a spiritual son of Paul. Paul never got married. But he went and preached in different places and among the Christians. This Timothy was a godly man, young man. And he saw that quality. He, Timothy was a very timid guy. Timothy was very timid, very shy. I was a very, very shy guy, even now. But God has pu pushed me and pulled me into scalling so that I will scream before people. Cry <laughs> God's word. Do you understand? It's not my nature to stand before people. I do not have the guts to do that. It's the calling that came upon me which is making me to do this. Likewise, Timothy had health problems, had stomach problems. Had a, uh, uh, he was very timid. He was not able to confront difficult people in the church. Do you understand? He had all his own difficulties. So Paul is trying to help him, train him up. Come on, come on, you can do it. Timothy, you will be the carrier of the apostolic ministry. You will go beyond, beyond me, Timothy. Don't worry. Only thing, cleanse yourself, consecrate yourself. Hallelujah. So that the master, when he enters the kitchen, he will just take it. Oh, this is the best one. You understand? He let him let the master, Jesus Christ, enter into your life and immediately take hold of you and use it. Be such a clean, pure vessel. Cleanse yourself with the word of God, with the blood of Jesus Christ, my dear brothers and sisters. Whenever you are hearing God's word, do you know one thing? You are being cleansed. I am cleaning you. Do you know that? I am cleaning your feet. Really? I know that is my ministry. Whenever I preach God's word with its fire, with its love, with its compassion will come and will wash your feet and go. Hallelujah. All the dirt in your feet will be washed through the preaching of God's word. In your spirit, you are washed clean. My dear brothers and sisters, not only that, you have to be ready for good, every good work he has in store. So he has a storage plan. Hundreds and hundreds of plans in his mind for you. Your company manager will not have a plan for you. But you, God has hundreds of plans for you. For your ministry. For you to express Christ in your life. Do you understand? He has a loads of loads and loads of plans for you. So, Timothy, again, he is drilling down to the next level of detail. Just imagine. Just imagine, today's word will be a little bit different, my dear brothers and sisters, but please take it, because these are the secrets embedded in the last few words of Paul. Timothy, now you have to start running away. Oh, running away? Yes. A true man of God, a true child of God is always a person on the move, running away from something. Don't, be, don't, don't feel shy or don't feel that you are a coward to run away. It's better you run away from youthful lust. Am I right? Timothy, run away from youthful desires. Lust of this world. Lust of the flesh. You have to run away. Don't run away from Satan. Stand against him and counter him. But when it comes to youthful desires, the hormones, okay, that start up in your young age, right? Youthful desires means don't think from, okay, 13 years to 29 years. They are the youth or 24 years. They are the youth. We are out of that. So we are not, this word doesn't apply. No, these youthful desires started at that age, but still remains until you are 70 years or 80 years. Am I right? Yeah, we are not exempted from that. So run away from the youthful desires until it struggles with you. Instead, you have to run, you have to run away from that. But wh where should I run? What is the direction of running? Can I run anywhere? No. You have to direct your passion to chasing after righteousness, faithfulness, love and peace. Like Usain Bolt, you have to run. Run like Usain Bolt from the youthful lust, desires, towards righteousness, towards love, towards peace. Do you understand the direction? You are called to be a runner. You are called to be an athlete in spiritual life. 
you are always on the move don't be afraid or don't feel unworthy that you are running away from certain things it's better you run away if joseph of old testament had to run away from that woman nothing wrong in you running away even in new testament that one particular area god told run away you understand run away from youthful desire run away from it but pursue with all passion look for righteousness wherever whatever you are doing make sure it is a righteous deed make sure it is full of love make sure it is full of peace and kindness and compassion and faithfulness along with those who call upon the lord with pure hearts see you have to come together and worship the lord with those who are compromised no with those who worship god with pure hearts so the congregation you have to ensure that your fellowship is a fellowship of pure hearts simple criteria very simple but very difficult in these days but god that is a necessity just look for pure hearts join together with them and worship and pray pray and praise god hallelujah my no no ulterior motive nothing 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 no ulterior motives only purity purity in the spirit purity in the heart my dear my dear brother only on the pure congregation the heaven is going to open and he is going to pour out the spirit of revival only even if it is a small child even if it is a school child god is ready to pour out the spirit upon you even if you are a doctorate in theology if your heart is not pure before god you are unworthy unfit to get the spirit of revival do you understand if god wanted theological people god will directly go to a theological seminary and pour out his spirit and bring about a revival why so many seminaries are which are delivering so many candidates every semester why revival is not happening from there think about it think about it because that is not god's criteria nothing wrong in theology i have also done theology but that is not what god is looking for god is looking for pure hearts simple from the beginning god's expectations are very clear very basic i learned theology because i want to know god more god more of god that is my intention not because it will step me up into revival no it's about my heart it's a heart to heart relationship with jesus hallelujah my dear brothers and sisters heart to heart relationship avoid excuse yourself from any conversations that turn into foolishness and uninformed debates because you know they only provoke fights as a lord slave you shouldn't exhaust yourself in bickering instead be gentle no matter what you are dealing with ready and able to teach don't fight with each other even if it is on doc- doctrinal matters tell them assertively tell them you are wrong but with love with compassion it is very difficult it is very difficult to preach this my dear brother but very difficult in practice for me to speak to a person who are in the wrong doctrine and make them understand that okay and bring them to christ okay there are when you argue there are three types of problems in argument particularly in spiritual things what is that sometimes if you are very very hard upon the other person who, with whom you are arguing okay you will lose the person but you will win the argument because you are very strong we are very very powerfully arguing you will be winning it okay but you will lose the person so it's a failure technique yeah and if you are very kind second technique is if you are very kind and loving to the person and we're ensuring that you have pour out his, all your love for him you have to come come uh, you have to uh, compromise on the doctrine that where you are losing god will not be happy about it so that is also a failure technique so what is paul saying for you to be the next apostle for you to be next god's voice you have to be a person ready and able to teach tolerant without resentment gently instructing them who stand up against you what does it mean you should know what you are teaching about christ if anyone challenges the virgin birth of jesus christ you cannot give up just to win the person you have to tell them yes god jesus was born of a virgin right it is an uncompromisable truth right about trinity the father son and the holy spirit it is uncompromisable truth so you have to 
stand up for the doctrine. At the same, be assertive, be clear in your teaching. When you express Christ, righteousness, truth, you have to be expressing it in its fullest form. At the same time, be gentle. This is a place where you and I have to be trained, where you and I have to rely upon the Holy Spirit. My dear brother, these are the days. Why am I speaking this? Only on a, on a pure congregation which stands up for the truth. That is where the Holy Spirit's move is going to happen. There are small, small cults which are, which are gathering, which are, which are forming in these days. Man-made cults where the Holy Spirit will not be poured upon them. Do you understand? They will feel their own. There is a pleasure in a cult. Do you know that? In, in deception, there is a... There is a Joy, there is, a, there is an enjoyment. When you go to a superstar's movie, they fool you for two to two and a half hours. But they make sure that you are happy for the two and a half hours, right? When you are coming out of that, oh, super, 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 they will say, say. But full of deception, from the minute one to the last minute, all false things. But you enjoyed it. Likewise, a cult is something which will give you a temporary pleasure. Even in the doctrines, it will give you a temporary pleasure. But at the end, it will kill you. It will destroy your spiritual life. That is why we have to be we have to ensure that we stand up for the truth. The foundational doctrines cannot be compromised. In the, in the days when Paul was writing, there was a group where Timothy was ministering. Okay? They were saying that the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of the saints have already happened. We understand, resurrection of Jesus Christ happened. But resurrection of saints is still pending. Even now, it hasn't happened. It is for a future date. Right? Even in the days of Timothy and Paul, there was a small group and two pastors are named in Paul's epistle that they have gone out with this type of doctrine and they have fallen from grace. Do you understand? Even in the days when apostles were living, there was a spirit of deception touching people and ruining them. And those pastors who rose up in God's ministry lost the presence of God just by allowing these cults and the wrong doctrines. So likewise, so we need to be very, very careful in protecting our mind. Just because something you hear is interesting, it doesn't mean it is the truth. The truth will always cleanse you. It will position you for the, for the love of Jesus Christ. For the love of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So gently instructing those who stand up against you. Sandamai avarilukku uvadhe sikki vendom. Sandha gunathodu kuda uvadhe. Andha kirubaye katha namakku tharano. Sandha gunam ullu avarilai uvadhe sikki nom. Enna maari katha kura adhu. Avdi ingira. It means don't shout like Prabhu. <laughs> be gentle. Be a gentle instructor of the word of God, of the pure word of God, so that you will win the people, at the same time, you will establish the right doctrine upon them. Do you understand how, what a great word of wisdom is coming from Paul in his last days. He is teaching it to Timothy, ensure that you are gentle and at the same time you stand for the truth. No compromise, just to win another person, don't compromise on the truth. My dear brothers and sisters, these are times when God is asking, you remember how the evangelist Philip in the book of Acts, he went to the eunuch and interpreted the book of Isaiah and he won that soul and he gave baptism and then he disappeared. What a great example of properly, gently teaching the truth to a learned man who lives in the, who is in the council of the kings and the queens. Very intelligent people, but Evangelist Philip went there, just interpreted the book of Isaiah to him, not even a New Testament by, uh, literature. Old Testament Isaiah he interpreted, he accepted Jesus Christ and he was asking in turn, what is stopping me from this water baptism? And he said, nothing is stopping. If you are ready to, to come and accept Jesus Christ from the waters, I am ready to baptize you. And he baptized and immediately he disappeared. You understand? Philip disappeared. Vanished. Gently instructing. Yeah? In 1 Timothy, 
chapter 5 verse 22 says, Don't be too quick to lay hands upon anyone or share in the sins of others. Stay clean. What does it mean? Don't bring people into ministry so quickly, hastily. It's not a training ground. You have to be trained already to come into ministry, to be active for God. It's not a trial and error method that you can come here and start doing all things, all dances. Nowadays, Christianity in India, uh, at least in my area in Tamil Nadu and all, it's all dances only. Hero worships and dances. That has become today's culture of Christianity. That is, you are not here to do trial and error methods. Because God's anger might come, even in New Testament. If God is angry, he will hit Herod and he will die on the throne. Book of Acts records that. Even in the New Testament, God is an angry God when it comes of boast, boasting in the pulpit. My dear brothers and sisters, what is God saying? God is still the same God that we are worshipping. That Abraham, Isaac and Jacob worshipped. Just his compassion, his grace has exceeded all limits in the cross of Calvary. He wants to extend his hand for everyone to come. Because he extends the, the period of grace for everyone. All people, all sinners, all types of people, all races. Not just the Jewish people. All races to come to him. Under his umbrella of the cross. And get saved. Get away from the eternal damnation that is coming. But at the same time, when a person who stands on the pulpit, who, st who represents God's service, if he is playing with it, God is not happy with it. Do you understand? Two types of reaction. God is ready to accept any sinner who repents and comes to him. But at the same time, he doesn't want to, al he doesn't want to allow anyone who wants to play in God's presence. God's presence is still holy. God's presence is still holy. Run away from all youthful passions and desires that will defile you. Run like Joseph. Joseph. My dear brothers and sisters, God's word is coming today for us to cleanse ourselves. Cleanse ourselves. There is no time. The revival is coming. I am praying that God's revival is coming upon this land. Upon us particularly. Let our hearts be plowed with the word of God. May God's word be sown in every area of our hearts, in our lives. May when God's shower of blessings comes, the seed should grow into trees. Hallelujah. So we are plowing your heart and, and sowing the seeds so that when the shower, when the revival shower, when the revival rain comes and showers, pours upon us, there will be great harvest. Hallelujah. My dear brothers and sisters, beautiful days are ahead of us. What type of beautiful days? Just for enjoyment? No. Just for a Christian entertainment? No. For a mighty move of God that will heal, save and deliver people across this area. Hallelujah. We are not here for 30, 40, 50 people. No. We are here for 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 people and beyond that as well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, my dear brothers, when we cleanse ourselves, when our cleansing, when, we, when our vessels are clean, God cannot say no to us. Do you understand? When we pursue God in all prayer, in all fasting, in all truthfulness, in all faithfulness before Him, asking for a mighty revival that He has promised in the scriptures, there will be a latter day rain. When you see the church of Satan, the devil's kingdom, the world rising up in such power, don't you feel that as a church of God, the kingdom of God has to rise up beyond that? Don't you have that feeling? Why are we not having that feeling? That is my question. Do you think we entering into politics is going to bring a change? No. It's good to have Christian politicians. Nothing wrong in it. We are happy about it. It's, may God bless them. But what is Paul teaching to Timothy? Timothy, now enter into politics. No? That's not the idea. Cleanse your vessels. Cleanse your congregation. Cleanse, let, 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 you, let, let your congregation be ready for master's use. Let those vessels in your congregation be ready and clean and pure 
in such a way when the master enters, he will immediately pick them up and use it. Hallelujah. For his purposes. My dear brothers, I was speaking in a birthday party today afternoon. Everyone here, I believe, will celebrate birthdays, right? Yeah. But you should understand, just because we are born on a particular day, we are celebrating birthdays. But I am telling you one thing, there is a reason behind your birth. Are you fulfilling that reason? If you are fulfilling that reason, you can also celebrate your birthday and the reason for your birthday. Do you understand? There is difference. Two, two types of people are there in this world. Two types of Christians, let us have, who will just celebrate because that is the day they were born on the earth, physical birth. Now I am asking, are you fulfilling the reason for which you were born? If you are not fulfilling it, you have to start fulfilling it. Right? When I was designed by God, when you were designed by God, God had a specific plan, reason, purpose for which you have been sent here. And after the last breath, I have to give accounts for that. 99.9% .9 of people will never realize the reason for their birth. In this earth. And those few people who realize may not fulfill it in their lifetime. Do you understand? I'm, I don't think I'm talking negative. No, I'm trying to be very, very positive. Many are called, few are chosen. May I add something? And only a handful of them fulfill it. Handful of them. We might be a very handful of people, but if we are able to fulfill God's calling in our lives, this ministry is a success. Do you understand how I am counting success? Not about thousands of people sitting in front of me and not even one or two fulfilling their calling in their life. No. Whoever has entered into this premises, may God enable them, may God bring such a realization in their life and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit in their life that we all will fulfill our own calling. Then, we are successful. Do you understand? The rate of success is different in God's kingdom. In God's eyes, it is different. Timothy, you are the next Timothy. Don't forget that. This epistle is not written for Timothy. It is written for you and for me. I want each and everyone seated here to be fulfillers of the divine purpose for, with which you have been created in your mother's womb. Even your mother will not know the purpose for which you were born, right? Or even the doctor who assisted the birth in the hospital will not know anything about your purpose of the birth. But God is saying, Jeremiah, I know, I knew you even before your mother. I designed you even before you first breathed in, the, in your mother's womb. You start breathing in your mother's womb itself. Even before that first breath, you breathe, I knew you. That's the Bible, not me. Can anyone challenge a mother's love? God is challenging. Can anyone challenge a mother's love? Jesus is challenging. I know you. I have Because I was the one who created. I am your first mother. Who is your mother? First mother is Jesus Christ. That's, that's my understanding from the scriptures. Jeremiah 1, 5, 1, 6, 1, 7. Read it. I had a foreknowledge of you even before your mother even thought about you. Even before she understood that she is conceived. I, I knew you. My child, I have a great plan for you. Don't waste it. This one life, you are not given seven turns to live this earthly life. Only one turn. Only one round. In this one round, you have to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God enable us today, my dear brothers and sisters. May this earthen vessels be cleansed and be pure for the master's use.